Welcome everybody to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 19. Today we're going to the minor leagues to spend some time for the first time in a while. We're going to play a game today at AAA and AA and take a look at some of the best prospects in our organization. Our team right now is really good at all three levels. And we have players that we can look forward to in the future like Ty Gonzalez, maybe somebody like Johnny Sandoval or Carmen Ojeda. There are a lot of impact draft picks from the various draft classes throughout the series and many of those players are getting closer and closer to their chance at the show. The pitcher we're going to watch today is 21 year old Fernando Campos with B potential. He's just 21 years old. He's a lefty who offers a lot of strikeout upside. He throws a four seam fastball, a cutter, a slider, and a curveball. So here we have the nine and four Rochester Red Wings and the Buffalo Bisons. It's been like a full season now since we've really seen the minor leaguers in action, so let's get familiar once again. Johnny Sandoval, 256 average this year. He's one of our better outfield prospects in the organization. And the changeup backs him off to run the opening at bat full. And there is a good swing on a line drive hit directly at short. Here's a look at our lineup today with Ty Gonzalez, the main player to be watching for. He's hitting 385 and... If the MLB had a 26-man roster, I think he would have made the cut. Here's the 0-1, fouling off the high fastball. This pitcher we faced, by the way, had a pretty good fastball, and the breaking pitches off of it were a little tough to get used to, so an ugly strikeout to open for Gonzalez. And then Carmen Ojeda going the other way to the opposite field, and that is caught out near the warning track. Ojeda not hitting as well as we'd like to see this year, but the season is still young. And here's Fernando Campos. I believe he pitched all last year at double A, and so far this year he's had a couple starts where he has struggled. He opens the game by allowing a hit, and the next batter goes to left field. Two sharply hit singles. Kirloff has some trouble here in left, but gathers it in. And facing Jose Tabada, we see Campos start to lose some of that command. It's not one of his best traits. That close just off the inside part of the plate, and now the bases are loaded. Nobody out. Four hitting Rocky Gale gets jammed. And some full steps by Ojeda. I'm telling you, I was holding back, like up, trying to get Ojeda in position. I wasn't controlling those first few steps. I don't know what happened, and then missing it with Alex Kirloff. Every episode, I have a weird defensive miscue. But Campos comes back. He gets the big strikeout looking on Bo Bichette. And still with the bases loaded, it is a 2-1 count. Fly ball left field. And at last, the first inning can come to an end. But it wasn't a very good one. Too much hard contact, too many defensive errors, and now we take it to the top of the second inning with the 300-plus hitting Lamont Wade. And this will be sent past short and into left field for a base hit. Wade is another player who's kind of been on the fringe of making it to the major leagues. This is one of our new catchers, Cam Gallagher. We traded for him before the season. He ends the inning on a strikeout. So could the second inning go better for Campos? He hits the outside corner with the cutter. And the 0-1 is hammered to left field. That ball is destroyed. Way out into the bullpen. At this point, I wondered if it was time to start warming up somebody in said bullpen, but... I decided that we were going to let Campos try to get through this and hopefully get this start on track. So already 3-0, 37 pitches in, and then way inside, he hits a batter. It's just not going well. Here's Jose Tabada again, ground ball to short, that is exactly what Campos needed. It's a routine 6-4-3 double play, and we'll take it to the third. Here is... Juan Herrera, a shortstop who got called up late last season. He gets a single into center. He hit really well a year ago, and I think if there's an injury to the infield for us, that he could definitely take over one of those roles. Here, they're definitely ready for him on the steal attempt. Easily thrown out. Now two down for Johnny Sandoval. Good contact here on the 1-2. It's hit to left center. That ball is down. If Herrera didn't get caught stealing, maybe he scores on that. It's a well-hit double. And Sandoval's in scoring position for Gonzalez. 
And waving at the curve again. Sandoval is able to move up 90 feet. So now all it takes is a base hit. But 0-2 to Gonzalez. And late, very late on the sinker. Some really bad strikeouts here. We go bottom three now. Campos out there again. That is hit to right. It'll fall in for a base hit. I believe that's the leadoff batter getting at least a single in all three innings to this point. Here is a fly ball hit shallow in right center, and we're able to take care of that one. And with two away, Bichette in the air. There we go. Much better inning for Campos, a leadoff hit, but some lazy outs, and we get through the third with no more offense. But we got to get ours going here. Carmen Ojeda trying to do just that. Hit well to center, but not well enough. Out number one. With two down, here is Juan Soto. We traded for him, and he hits this one over to first base for another routine out. The Red Wings just can't get much going their way on either side of this game. Here's Campos with a grounder to first. Good play by Ty Gonzalez. Defense is not really his strength. He'll likely be a DH at the next level. Here is a cutter on the outside from Campos. And the 0-1 is a pretty good curveball as he gets ahead in the count. Oh, and two, it's popped up into foul territory. Ojeda over, looking for a play, he's got it. Campos does a pretty good job getting weaker contacts and some outs in play. So we go to the fifth inning, Cam Gallagher line drive center field. That's just like our second or third hit of the game, we'll take it. And two down for Herrera, breaking ball nearly pulled down the line just in front of it. The 0-2 is in there at the knees, strike three looking. Great stuff here from the opposing pitcher as we go bottom five. Campos turning around this start, but another leadoff hit for Buffalo gives them a runner aboard. Next batter, this is Rocky Gale, and he's going down the line, it's just fair. And Kirloff misjudges the rolling ball. And it goes all the way to the wall, another run scores. No error charge to Kirloff. I don't know how. But runners at the corners later in the inning. 4 nothing Buffalo. Campos ahead in the count. And that is a weak grounder hit up the middle. Flip to second. We got through it. Campos now allowing four runs in five innings as we go to the sixth. Johnny Sandoval leads off and goes after the first pitch. Line drive left field and it gets out of here. Wow. A low trajectory, and it just kept going. Johnny Sandoval with his second home run of the season. It's something for Rochester. And how about this? The way this game started, I never thought we'd see Campos here in the sixth, but he did bounce back really well. I felt he was hitting his spots better, and the contact that we were able to get was much weaker. It wasn't that he was getting a lot of strikeouts. There were actually very few in this game. He still gave up a lot of hard contact and a lot of base runners, but we were able to manage. Here is a double, but with two away. Able to get ahead in the count, and now evened up. 2-2, getting the batter to chase the slider. Campos ends up making it through six, only allowing the four runs. Really good job of turning that start around, and now we'll take it to the seventh. This is Juan Soto striking out. And with one away, Lamont Wade's turn. One for two on the day, and he hammers this ball to right field. It is way out of here. Goodbye. That ball hung up, and he got all of it. Over 420 feet on this blast to right field. He's not someone that I've thought about a ton for the Major League roster, but the way he's played so far this year and our lack of outfield depth, there's a chance that he could see himself at the major leagues this season. I'd be shocked if he doesn't. Rochester goes to their bullpen in the seventh inning. Tyler J, one of our better lefties out of the pen, and he gets the quick strikeout. And with two away, Rocky Gale has been great today. This one, though, is not going to fall. It lands in the glove of Lamont Wade. And we'll take it now to the top of the eighth inning. Juan Herrera leads off and gets ahead with this fastball missing outside. Here is the 1-1 from Gonzalez. Well hit to left field. Herrera gives this one a ride. It is way back. It is gone. Another solo home run for the Red Wings. That's one in the sixth, one in the seventh, one in the eighth. Now we just trail by a single run. Gonzalez gets jammed. It's going to shallow center, but definitely catchable. Two down in the eighth. 
Carmen Ojeda hitless on the day, but there's a line drive. Left field getting down. Rochester trying to make a game out of this after all. A nice comeback effort. Now Alex Kirloff. Line to second base and caught. So we've got to get this done then in the ninth. But first we have to get through bottom eight with Sandy Bunty, who's been perfect so far on the season. No runs allowed anyway. And here is a slow roller over to short. It is a routine play for Herrera. And that is the second out. Next up, it is Bo Bichette. 0 oh, 1 count and a soft grounder over to first base. A throw to Bunty, making this a lot more difficult than it really has to be. But at least I make the play on this one, and we're going to the ninth. Rochester needs another solo home run. They've already done it three innings in a row. Juan Soto, 1 2, holds back on the curveball that goes wide. 2 and 2. Ooh, fastball up, fouled away, full count to Soto. Strike three on a good cutter just below the knees. Soto looks at nine pitches, and we go to our second batter, Lamont Wade. Had that monster home run a little bit earlier in the video. Falls behind 0-2, fouls off another good pitch. 0-2 again, that one hung up, it's hit to right and down. Three hit day for Lamont Wade, definitely making a statement. And now we get Cam Gallagher, who singled earlier. This one hit in the air to center. In comes the center fielder to make the routine play two down. Rochester needs something here. And we go to our bench for a pretty good hitter, Andy Eckert. He's a contact hitter who doesn't play the best defense, so he doesn't play every day. And Eckert steps in, 1-0. Drilled to center. This one's hit well, but it's within range and caught. Rochester fights back from a 4-0 deficit. Campos played better. The offense got going a bit, but we fall short in a 4-3 loss. Still ended up being a really fun game, and this game right here just made me want to play a bunch more minor league action. So we're going to have another game today and perhaps more to come if you guys want to see more of this minor league action. I really enjoy it, just seeing players like Fernando Campos and kind of the narrative of that game not starting out too well but getting a lot better and then Wade taking off. Now we're going to switch gears a bit to double A and pay a lot more attention to starting pitcher Vernon Ozuna who is only 19 years old, one of our younger players from our most recent draft class and he is pitching for Pensacola. Now, in the past, we had a different minor league club here at AA. The Twins in real life changed this year, so we also have Pensacola and MLB 19. There aren't as many hitters right now at AA that I'm confident will make a future impact at the major leagues, but Chuck Bearden, Ray Lowry, Carlos Rodriguez, those are some players I'm looking forward to. But here is Jonathan Goslin. And that is going to go down the line. It gets into the corner, and Goslin, despite not having very good speed, gets into second base. There we go. We'll take the double. Now, Ray Lowry hitting 383 entering this game. Cutter is in there for a strike, and there are the numbers. Pretty solid start. He's DHing here. And this one is rolled over to first base, and they'll make a similar play to my Sandy Bunty play from the last game. So no runs there in the first, and now Vernon Ozuna takes over. Bottom one, fastball, not quite in there, apparently. The 1-0, almost the same location, not getting much close. 2-0, come on, one of these has got to be a strike. 3-0, inside, okay, I'll give you that one. A four-pitch walk for Ozuna, how does he follow that up? That's a frustrating at-bat. Well, he goes right back to the outside part of the plate. Strike one, then goes up a little bit with the fastball to quickly get ahead. 0-2, change up on the inside corner, no problem. We'll take it now to the second inning with Ozuna. Here's the five hitter, 0-1, turns into 0-2. And then Ozuna breaks out the slider. He's got Coulter waving at it for strike three. With two down, this is Bill Winston with a grounder. Staying in the infield, pretty good first couple innings for Ozuna, so let's keep it with them here. Third inning, one down, here's the nine hitter, DeAndre Riley with a lazy fly to left center, no issue there. 
First time through the order, Biloxi gets nothing more than a walk, and then the slider on the outside corner. The control is fantastic for Ozuna. That one was also on the inside corner, and it's a routine ground ball hit to third base. So Ozuna starting out fantastic. Now the offense. You got to reward your starting pitcher here. Chuck Bearden steps in, hitting pretty well on the season. A few homers, 11 RBIs. And this is a line drive into the right center gap for a base hit. Now a player I've been really excited about throughout this series. His development has been a little slower than I thought it would be, but Carlos Rodriguez will still hopefully have a bright future, and that is a line drive to right. Two hits here in the inning for Pensacola. Now a runner in scoring position. DJ Stewart, the batter, behind the 93-mile-per-hour fastball. He works the count full. And Stewart underneath this one, hit in the air to center. And over to make the catch, Bill Winston ends the inning. Ozuna going into the fourth, facing Johnny Davis, and that's on the inside. I could not get over how well he was hitting his spots and just how dominant he looked. He looked like he needed to be in AAA the way he was playing. Bottom four, two down, again on the outside. He's just not missing. 0-1, now out in front of it for another strike. 0-2 for Ozuna. It's game over once he breaks out that slider dominant first four innings in the fifth now Clint Coulter leads off and this will get them the first hit of the day off of Vernon Ozuna but they need a lot more than that so one this is sharply hit cut on a line over at third base now two down in the inning ahead in the count one two that slider again I think we found Ozuna's pitch when he gets ahead with two strikes we got to get some runs here. Top six. This is Goslin. It is knocked down at third base, but Goslin will reach once again. A hit down each line now. Here's Bearden. Oh, good pitch to hit. He's way underneath it. Yeah, the offense down here at double A is never the most exciting. Triple A is a lot more fun for offense. Two down, and this is a line drive hit to left field, and Ray Lowry has a base hit. So again, two on, two down for Pensacola. And it's a 2-0 count to Carlos Rodriguez. That'll miss inside. Trying to load these bases up, and Rodriguez will draw a five-pitch walk. Can Pensacola break this game open? They are loaded now for DJ Stewart, following off the four-seamer. Working the count full. Stewart strikes out on the change, and we are still scoreless. And for Ozuna, I thought he could go the distance in this game the way he was pitching. He has the stamina on everything. Bottom six. How about Ozuna starting this one? And we're able to double up a pretty fast runner to get through six. Bottom seven. Ozuna still has the pitch count in the 60s as that will fall just in front of Rodriguez in right field. Then it's Victor Roach, the four hitter. And that's hit pretty well to right center field. It's going to reach the wall. So trouble now for Pensacola as the ball thrown back into the cutoff man and Biloxi has the first run of the game. That kind of came out of nowhere. 2-0 to the next batter. Coulter, that's hit well to right field. Base hits. Ozuna had allowed just two hits, I believe, entering this inning. It's three straight for Biloxi. And now Ozuna can't find the strike zone. 3-0 count and they're loaded up. At that point, I had to take him out of the game. I don't know what happened here in the seventh, but I wanted Raul Fernandez to hopefully end it and keep it just 1 0. But nobody's out. 1 1, line drive center. It's down for a hit. Biloxi has their offense figured out now. It is 2 to nothing. Still no outs in the seventh. Jake Gatewood is the batter, and Fernandez falls behind in the count to him. The 2-0, hammered to right, that's hit well, it is going and gone, a grand slam. What happened to this pitcher's duel we had going on? I was kind of enjoying it. And now, 6 to nothing. Biloxi looks unstoppable, but that's okay. Mother Nature is on our side. It was thunderstorming all game. I actually heard the thunder multiple times throughout. And a rain delay finally came to help us, and it worked. After the rain delay, we only allowed one more run, but still we lose the game and got shut out in the process. So what was a really amazing start for Ozuna turned into one where he had six innings, four runs allowed. 
Very similar numbers to Fernando Campos, just very different ways of getting there. But still, seeing the context of it and how he pitched those first six, really excited about Ozuna's upside going forward. Meanwhile, at the Major League level, the Twins were taking care of business and improved their record to 15-6. and six. Here against Cleveland, Dallas Keuchel was one out away from a no-hitter. He goes 8.2. Must have allowed a solo home run. So close. But a big bounce back after some struggles in his first few starts. Then the Twins decide to break out the bats. 10-1. to Homers from Garver, Odonez, and Mookie Betts. And a good start from Maxwell Fowler. Complete game and already a 4-0 record. I don't really judge pitchers based on wins and losses. But winning your first four starts is still pretty cool. Jose Barrios bounces back here a bit. 5.2 innings, 4 runs allowed. I do intend to be patient with him. And then Yadier Alvarez. 5 innings allowed, 4 runs. It hasn't been the season he's wanted so far with the 7.5 ERA. I'm pretty shocked right now at the AL Central standings. The Tigers are in second. Nobody else is really doing well besides us. We have one of the best offenses to begin the season. Yasiel Puig leads the team in home runs. He's hitting 306. Jorge Polanco is kind of struggling, but he's the only one. And then pitching, Keiko's getting better. Fowler's been at his absolute best. Tadano's been awesome. We've got to hopefully figure some things out, though, with Alvarez and Barrios. But I'm going to be patient with both those guys. Meanwhile, the Tigers have Daniel Murphy hitting eight homers so far. They have good numbers from Michael Fulmer, Christian Binford. I don't know how they're doing it, but so far so good for Detroit. They're a top 10 hitting offense at the moment, while still being a below average pitching team. They're above 500 for at least the time being. That is going to do it for this episode, everybody. Hope you had a good time today. I would look forward to getting back to the minor leagues for some more action, but leave your feedback as to what you'd like to see next time here in the Twins franchise, and I'll have more of it coming your way soon. So please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all again in the near future. Have a great weekend, everybody.